he was crying. I knew he'd been crying all day. I could hear him loud above my cotton footsteps over and over and over. I opened the door to my, my baby and my tear-stained wife, both tired, fraught, small. Given to me, I said, he cried all through tea time. He was still crying at bedtime. Nothing would bring him respite. And the evening grew longer and longer. And as the clock turned from one day to the next, I tried to sleep. I needed my sleep. I needed to sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, he'd start crying again. And so, defeated, I, I held him in the armchair as the cold of the small hours crept through the house. I remember seeing the sun slowly start to bleed into the sky and thinking, I gotta be up in an hour. I got to be up in an hour. And then like that, he stopped. A hush fell over the house and we slept. And Marie shook me, I, I thought, oh, something's wrong. The baby, sleep in, she replied. Oh, I relieved, I, I closed my eyes and settled back again and muttered, what's wrong? It's five to eight, she said nervously. Oh, panic, two and a half hours late. I'd never been late in my life. I'd known of men late once, then out on their ear. There's plenty of men waiting to take our jobs if we're late for work. I threw on my clothes and I ran, my heart pounding more heavily than my feet, tiredness forgotten. When I reached the bottom of the hill, I could see the pit head looming out the morning fog. <laughs> I stopped to catch my breath, coughing black dust into the air. And then, from nowhere, the sky caught fire. Blue became orange. And there was a noise that, that, like nothing I'd ever heard. And where the pit there that stood just moments before, there now stood nothing. The main mist greedily eaten by smoke. I ran, my feet crunching through the frost of broken glass. Pinching myself and realised that I was awake. Oh, I was wide awake. The mouth of the pit, it was like a dragon belching smoke and flames into the skyline. The men were shouting and screaming. The mind was alive with panic. I remember running, running to see what I could do. And the smell, thick, acrid, like a, like a thousand bonfire nights. And the red, broken faces of men moving slowly towards me through the thick fog of smoke, like, like phantoms, the men of the mine the lifeblood of the town, burnt to a cinder. I sat down, tears streaming. And I looked down at the town below, people like, like moles were emerging from their houses, blinking, disbelief, knowing that the fire in my back, the smoke in their streets, their world was changed. It was a new and cruel. The first funerals happened pretty quickly. The black town gathering. The women and children, the tears drowning the cobbles. As the men of the town went to their rest. A few nights later, shaking and altered, sitting in the quiet, unable to light the fire, <laughs> my baby in my arms, my wife asleep. Once again, I found sleep evading me. And in the gray light of late evening, I looked into his eyes. And I saw the eyes of 439 men looking back at me and I vowed then 
to do the best I could for him, to give him the best chance of leaving this place so he'd never have to see this harshness for himself. This cold, cold hill and this so cruel work.